I'm Michael Janantonio. I'm the writer, producer, and director for the independent motion picture, Space Munchies. Gang signs. Space Munchies is a story about a drunken space alien who comes to Earth in search of a late night snack. I got the idea for Space Munchies when I was on the festival circuit with my last film, Blurred Vision, a horror film which took the festival circuit by storm. I wanted to do a film that everybody would love, a science fiction spectacular extravaganza. Hi, I'm John Voigt. I am a producer and executive producer of the film Space Munchies. Space Munchies started as a short film project and since has become a feature length film. There's things in this movie that you're gonna love. On this set, you know, we're gonna be, we're gonna be blowing shit up. We've always dreamed of doing a film and being able to blow shit up. And on this one, we're, we're gonna be doing just that. The special effects that we've chosen to do in Space Munchies are all practical effects. Everything we do, we are building by hand. We're gonna be putting together this massive ship and it's just going to look realistic. We're hand building a spaceship. The magnitude of this film, most people that, that, that have made films that have come out of here, you know, they're, they're cheesy. They're terrible uh, CGI effects, you know, and we're not doing CGI in this movie. We're, we're actually making the, the ships. We're making the real cockpit. We're building a whole alien city on, on top of that, you know. And you're going to be able to look into the windows of these apartments and seeing scenes inside these things as you're, you know, flying by them. Yeah, this has really not been done here before, and we're the first year to do it. All of our prosthetics are real, tangible items that you can touch and feel. There are no visual effects in this film. Working with Michael is, is great. I mean, we've had a chemistry for years. You know, we pick each other up when we're down. You know, like. You know, if he's having a hard time, you know, I, you know, I, I give him a little pep talk and then he's right back into the game and, and same here with me. Today, I took the opportunity to interview our special effects supervisor, Rob Kaboski. Rob has a very impressive resume and he's very well respected. We just had uh, Rob Kaboski in the studio earlier today. It was great to learn um, a little, little bit about him and a little bit of history, you know, especially that werewolf that he brought in, knowing that this thing here has caused panic you know, worldwide. He's gotten death threats from around the world, you know, thinking that this werewolf was real. And it, it was really cool looking. Rob brings with him a very, very unique flair to our motion picture. Practical effects that were designed and thought through in such a way that most people wouldn't consider doing. We can do anything with our special effects. Like, you know, like we can make it look like an alien town that blast off from that area and then shooting through the stars and coming down here on, on the Earth and make, making it look like one smooth flight and making it believable, like, you know, you really did that. Coming down in, onto, into Earth, I think it's gonna be awesome. Let's take a look at some of the things that we did on the film already. On day one of filming, Rob was on set to give us some of the most amazing effects we could ask for. He came up with an interesting way to move our feet. They looked very real and it brought our alien to life. excited to work with Rob as we go forward on this picture. We have a lot of things in store. We're going to show you behind the scenes looks at how all of our effects are done. I had the opportunity to interview Rob Kabaski today. When you had me come in here and see the rough cut, uh, there are some things in there that I've always wanted to see in a film that I've created and I got to see it in this film and, and you impressed me <laughs> with what you did, man. You guys are going to be blown away. I can't uh, explain how exciting this film is with the lighting and the acting and the monsters. It's going to be really cool. There was a lot of uh, space between when we first started and now because of COVID and, and events and stuff. Life, like all the other artists in this film, 
I've learned a lot since we've started this thing and I can't wait to apply everything that I've learned. And I'm just really grateful that uh, we're getting back on this project and filming because to this day, I talk about this film because I saw little pieces uh, when we were filming and on set with 50 others working and you showed me a little piece of that. And I'll never forget what I saw uh, on the playback. Now, fast forward a couple years after COVID and everything, what you've put together and what I see more now is, is uh, like this could possibly be like the best film I've ever made. Space Munchies is not just a film to us, it's a passion project. And as with many passion projects, they take time. We shot our first scene for Space Munchies in December of 2018. As COVID shut down our entire industry, it also shut down our film. It took us a very long time to get back to the drawing board to get Space Munchies back onto the slate to create what we're doing here today. And today we've decided to take Space Munchies in a very new direction. So we're building a 48 inch spaceship. It's massive. This thing is huge. It's being built by fine artist Sean T. French. I'm Sean T. French, fine artist, metal sculptor, fire artist, and special effects artist on the film Space Munchies. I'm Sean T. French, metal sculptor. Some people like to paint cars. Some people like to bake cakes. I like to pound metal. I've been an artist my whole life. Went to the University of Texas, graduated with a fine arts degree. I am always in my best place when I'm creating. When I'm making something, I feel like me. That's when I feel the most alive. Most of the time, I try to create a piece that is new to the world. One of my pieces I call Descent. This shows a female form that looks like she could be blasting through like the Earth's atmosphere or another planet's atmosphere, very much in control. In one hand, she has what looks like might be the Philosopher's Stone. In the other, she's doing a sign of divinity. She represents a new force of female power, almost delivered from another planet or another galaxy. She has a look on her face like she knows what's gonna happen next. Everyone in front of her doesn't, and she's definitely got a deliberate direction forward. Another piece that very much touches on the look and feel of ceremony, I call temper. She's a female form in what looks like a praying position and has as her lower part of her body a crescent moon. She also features installed LEDs that make her look like she actually lights up on fire through the reflection on the metal. The large piece that was recently completed called The Siren was a collaboration. All of these people bringing an amazing skill set to what I do with my metal sculpture. I believe this is what adds to its ability to command a space. The mermaid is also breaking loose a chain. You can see that she looks captive almost like, say, in the movie King Kong when King Kong was captured. We wanted to give that effect along with the idea that she has broken loose. And she has a look on her face like she knows what's gonna happen next. No one else in the room does. I don't see a limit. It's what we can imagine, it's what we can do. Not limited by tools, not limited by resources, unlimited by what we can imagine. I want to be on some sort of deathbed or in some final moment feeling like I did all I could. There wasn't much left. To me, that's the definition of success. What I'm doing today is I'm getting together the parts and going to the design on a spaceship that I'm gonna be making for the movie that's a key character in the film. Everything is gonna work. It's gonna have a fantastic fire system that doesn't just belch a standard flame, but I wanna do a system that I can adjust into different colors and have it at different speeds so that the ship looks like it's doing different things, hovering, moving at different speeds, warping, all that kind of stuff. And it's going to be the exact reflection of a set that we're also building that is the inside of the ship. Looking forward to sharing with you the process that I go through on making some of the bits and pieces to eventually become what you'll see in the movie.
Sean is also a master of pyrotechnics. I'll collaborate with these fine artists to create the most amazing motion picture we can dream in our heads. And I gotta tell you, I've got a really vivid imagination. Rob Grabowski with, with the alien knocking it out of the park. Shanti French, you know, and his metal mastery. I can't wait to see what these two can collaborate and do. With Shanti French is gonna be building the ship. You know, and you're, you're gonna feel like you're actually probably in this thing when the, the jets fire off on the rocket. I mean, I, I, I can only imagine what that's gonna look like on screen. This alien pilot is gonna be the shit. It's gonna look great. And, and then if you have special effects that come out of the thing, I mean, come on, get real. Star Wars probably don't have nothing on this alien pilot. I think people are gonna be, I think they're gonna be shocked. They're gonna be like, holy crap, this, came from filmmakers from Phoenix, Arizona. This, is, this was not a Hollywood movie. If you follow us on social media, we're gonna take you on the filmmaker's journey so you too can see what we go through when we make a motion picture. We'll show you step by step how you too can add these amazing effects in your motion pictures. We invite you to join us on our journey as we traverse this crazy world known as independent filmmaking. We have come a long way as filmmakers. A scale of one through 10, I think this one's gonna to go to 11.